Do you wish to move to Canada and explore the country while working and traveling? Well, Government of Canada offers the International Experience Canada program as a global mobility program aimed at attracting young people aged between 18 and 35 of years of age from various countries around the world. Today, we will discuss the IEC Canada program in detail, so stay tuned. Welcome back. I'm Hassan Sharik from Sharik Immigration, Canadian immigration consulting firm based in Toronto, Canada. Today's video will provide you details on the IEC Canada Mobility Program as a whole, but our focus will be on IEC subcategory, which is the Working Holiday Visa of Canada. This video has been divided into various chapters, so you may skip to any of the subtopics of your choice, but I highly recommend watching the whole video if you wish to apply for the IEC 2023 program and you don't have much info already. The topics that we will cover are what is the International Experience Canada program, which are the eligible countries, various IEC visa categories, eligibility for these programs, application for IEC, and the post IEC options. So let's begin. What is IEC? IEC stands for the International Experience Canada. It is an open work permit or work visa that eligible applicants can obtain for a period of up to two years. During this time, you can work and travel in Canada freely. This program opens every year as a multilateral agreement between Canada and various other countries, where eligible applicants can submit their profiles. If they're picked from the pool, they can apply for a work visa and spend time in Canada. Let's have a look at the eligible countries. So IEC is open to citizens of 36 countries. Citizens can apply for the, this program um, from, from these 36 countries. Keep in mind that if you're a permanent resident of one of these countries, you're not eligible under IEC, you have to be a citizen. We have the list of countries on the screen. You can, you can have a look, but you can find a link in description of the video, which you can use to check if your country of citizenship is part of this Canadian visa program or not. There are several subcategories under the IEC program, and I will provide details on each in the next section. But the thing to keep in mind is that each of the 36 nationalities that are eligible for the IEC program are not all eligible for all the three subcategories. Though the good news is that all these nationalities are eligible for the subcategory that is the easiest to apply. We will find about that category in a bit. Each of the country has a specified quota allocated to it, and this varies based on the kind of agreement that the government of Canada has with the government of that country. As an example, Australia last year had an unlimited quota. They had some 9,000 invitation issues, whereas Costa Rica only had about 200 spots. UK had 8,000 spots and Ireland had about 10,700 spots. The good news is that for the 2023 IEC season, Government of Canada intends to accept some 90,000 people from all these 36 countries. And this will mean an increase of about 20% spots compared with last year. Let's have a look at the various IEC visa categories. So under the International Experience Canada program, there are a total of three different subcategories that you could apply to. These are the Working Holiday Visa category, the Young Professionals category, and the international co-op or internship uh, sub-visa category. We will look at details of each of these now in detail. First up, the working holiday visa category. This is the category which is the most popular as it has least set of requirements attached to it. Also, working holiday visa of Canada is open for all 36 nationalities that are eligible under the IEC Canada program. I will, give, I will give you a brief overview of the two other categories under IEC, but the focus of this video is Working Holiday Visa of Canada. So first, for Working Holiday Visa of Canada, there is no requirement for a job offer. You can work for multiple employers when you come to Canada. You can work in multiple locations, and you can work and take breaks in between to travel around Canada. Under this stream, you will get an open work permit, which means you're entitled to work anywhere in Canada for any employer. That's nice, eh? So next we have the young professionals category. Under this category, you must have a job offer from a Canadian employer. 
so it's it's an employer specific work permit this job must help contribute towards your professional development under this category you are issued an employer specific work permit and you are required to work at the location that the employer has its business operations this category is not open to all the 36 eligible nationalities to know which nationalities it's open to you can find the link in the description of the video just to mention that the number of spots for this category are very small compared with the working holiday visa as most spots are actually kept for the working holiday visa so no doubt that's that's really popular then we have the international co-op or internship category like the young professional category this category is also not open to all the nationality that are eligible under iec again you can use the same link in the description of the video to know if your nationality is eligible for this category or not the requirements are that if you're enrolled in a post-secondary educational institution and you are from one of the eligible nationalities or countries of citizenship you can apply under this category for an employer specific work permit the condition is that you will be doing a paid internship or a work placement in canada and that this internship is a required part of your degree the internship in canada must be paid and must relate to your field of study this category has the lead spots every year as it has the maximum conditions attached to it now let's look at the eligibility for for this program so all you need to do is visit the official government of canada website and use the iec eligibility check tool which is in the in the description of the video through this you can ascertain if you are eligible and which categories are you eligible for once you are on the web page first you select your citizenship from the drop down menu and then you see which categories um, your citizenship is eligible for. As most of you will be looking at applying for working holiday visa of Canada, so pick this and you will see all the important details with regard to eligibility. This page will give you details of the maximum age limit for your country of citizenship. This usually varies either as 30 years or 35 years, depending on the nationality. You will also know the length of work permit that you can be granted. It varies between 12 months or 24 months. And lastly, you will also know how many times can you participate in IAC. Some nationalities can only participate once and some are allowed to participate more than once. The general eligibility requirements for the working holiday visa category for all nationalities are that you should have a passport which is valid for the entire duration of your proposed stay in Canada. You should not be less than 18 years of age. You must have a minimum of 2,500 Canadian dollars in your possession to prove that you can cover your expenses in Canada when you move initially. You're required to have health insurance for your entire duration of stay in Canada. Now, this is not needed when you, when you apply. This is actually needed when you arrive. You should also not be inadmissible to Canada on the basis of a past criminality or a serious medical issue. Your dependents are not to accompany you when you're applying for the working holiday visa. They can definitely come study uh, and visit Canada later on. Now let's have a look at the application process. So the IEC program opens in the start of every year. It's usually first or second week of January when the round of invitations start. Once you've determined your eligibility using the eligibility check tool, you can complete the coming to Canada questionnaire. After that, you create your profile on the Canadian immigration website and get your profile entered into the right pool of applicants, the three sub-visa categories that we talk. Once you're in the pool of applicants, you start waiting for a round of invitations. Canada Immigration conducts these round of invitations for IEC on a regular basis, multiple times a year. As there is a quota for most of the nationalities and for the overall working holiday visa, so if you enter the pool earlier in the year, you will have much better chances of being invited. Once you're picked in an IC round of invitation, you will get a message in your IRCC online account. You then have the uh, you then have 10 working days to accept the ITA. And once you accept the ITA, you will have another 20 days to submit your complete application. So it is very important to know which documents you need to submit for your working holiday visa application and have them ready so that you can meet the tight deadline, the 10 days to accept invitation and then the 20 days uh, to submit your, your complete documentation for them. 
Some of the common documents that you may need to submit with your working holiday visa application are proof of financial support, the 24,500 Canadian dollars that we talked of, uh, so bank statement showing that. You might be required to undergo medical examination. You will be required to provide police certificates, uh, an updated resume for your, from your side, a digital passport size picture, family information form, your proof of residency in your country of citizenship, applicable fees are for IEC and work permit if that's applicable. You may be asked to provide additional documents after you submit your application if, and if you do not have a requirement required document at the time of document submission deadline, there are ways to submit the application still in time and then provide that document later. If you need help with your application at any stage, you can book a consultation with myself using the link provided in the description of a video. As an RCIC, I can officially represent you in your IEC application and help you from start till the grant of your work permit. So it usually takes few weeks for the processing of your application, um, around five weeks was the time previously. And once you have an approval, you'll get an approval letter with which you can apply for a work permit, which can be applied online, or you can be granted that at a Canadian port of entry. So what are the post IEC options? Now that you know what is a working holiday visa and you would want to try your luck in this beautiful country of Canada for 12 to 14 months, you might be considering what happens after the visa expires. You can use the Canadian work experience that you have gained in Canada to apply for the various permanent residency streams. As you would have gained about one to two years of experience in Canada, so this will give you some valuable points under the point-based Canadian um, permanent residency systems of say express entry. Then depending on the province that you've lived and worked, there are a lot of provincial nomination programs for which you could be eligible. And the last option is that the employer that you've been working can support your application through an LMIA. My suggestion is that for now, just focus on obtaining the Canadian working holiday visa, arrive in Canada, gain some work experience. You will find your pathway towards permanent residency of Canada if you wish to stay back after your working holiday visa expires. So that's a wrap up about discussion on the topic of International Experience Canada visa process. Hope I have been able to provide some valuable info, info to you. If that is the case, do support us by liking, subscribing and following the channel. If you, wish, if you wish to seek professional assistance for your working holiday visa, do consider booking a consultation through the link provided in the description of the video. With this, I'll ask for a leave. Take care. Bye-bye.